haven't even been down the beach yet. We literally just dropped the van and went straight to the bottle. <laughs> Grab a pack of these bad boys. Apparently they're good. So, I don't know. We'll see. If I don't see the number plates, I'll never know where Queensland is. <laughs> G'day guys. I'm Brad. My lovely wife Hayley is behind the camera. And together we're our Australia trip. In today's episode, we are starting off our Western Australia journey. This is going to be a massive journey over many months. And uh, we're stoked to be here, starting it off in Esperance. Right, so what's up? All right, so our first day in Esperance, the sun is shining, the wind is low. So we are going to do the Great Ocean Drive, which is a 40 kilometer loop that you can do around Esperance. And it goes along the coast and it tucks into all these different beautiful beaches and lookouts and whatnot along the way. Yeah, that's the plan for today. We're already off to a good start. Yeah. Have a go at it. But, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First stop today is a beach called Lover's Cove. So we parked here um, at the lookout and then we walk down about 15 minutes apparently and we get to the Lover's Cove beach. You reckon I might be able to pinch a kiss down there? If you're good. Hey babe, what do you reckon? Wow, how good for our first beach in Esperance. There's no one here. It's so blue and the sand is so white and I love these like rocks that are on the edge of the um, water. Hey, like it's so pretty. Very unique. Double thumbs love up. Love it. <laughs> It's so nice in there. Is it freezing? It's no, it's actually really nice. And I open my eyes on the water oh. and it's like so blue. Okay, I'm coming in. Okay, come on. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Whoa, look at the watercolor. I know, it's amazing. It's like it's a bit worrying though because there's no one else here. Is this like a bad beach for Esperance to stand in? Because this is a 10 out of 10 beach anywhere else in Australia. Wow. Mind blown. If this is the start of today, it can only get up, go up from here. Look at this view, like from the water. Look at that watercolor. Wow. <laughs> been driving on this great ocean drive for about a kilometer and that's what you've seen so far is all that is in the space of a kilometer this is just knocking my socks off <laughs> it's unbelievable hey every t like corner you turn bam another beast i shouldn't want you i shouldn't need you but i'm afraid that's not up to me Cause when I hear ya sing through my speakers, it's like my mind takes a hold of me. I've tried shutting you off for some time now, but I'm still hearing your voice in my head. Oh, I wish I was more than your fan now, and that your voice came from here in my bed. You're in my headphones, baby, in my headphones, baby, in my headphones, singing to me. We come out to Twilight Beach, and this is probably one of the most popular beaches in Esperance. You can see why. But there's an island out here 
that you can see some people are walking on and I want to walk on the island. Not sure about Hayley because she's told me that this area there's a lot of sharks swimming in between and around this island. So they have been known to and it's a bit it's a bit unnerving when there's signs up in the car park where to call an ambulance to in the case of a shark attack. But we're gonna do it. I've been sitting on the beach having lunch. Yeah, haven't seen any sharks, so look at how beautiful the water is. Stunning. We were also told in WA that the wind works like clockwork and it picks up around lunchtime. And sure enough, it's lunchtime and the wind picked up. Luckily it's not too strong though. We were sitting on the beach over there uh, and it was quite protected, but as soon as we got out of the shelter of that headland, uh, you can feel it, so it's nice in this beach. It's nice and protected. All right, let's go to this island. Just because someone anchored out there. Just because that was the name of a ship. Yeah. But it was in 1792, so that was like, you know, that was a long time ago. Yeah. You're a teacher, you should know how many years that is. Oh, she's losing her edge. <laughs> really shot up now but we're at the last beach on our loop and this is 11 mile beach and it's a pretty good beach because there's lagoons either side massive swimming pools beach access with your four for your four-wheel drive mate this is incredible it actually reminds me a bit of uh fraser with the champagne pools yeah. have a go at it attraction before we headed back into town and this is pink lake and you can see behind me it's not very pink at the moment and there's a few reasons for that so this lake hasn't been pink for quite a while and it's due to a couple of contributing factors but long story short is that 
In order for this lake to turn pink, it has to have very low water levels and very high salt concentration. And uh, back in the day, when they constructed the highway that takes you out of town towards Albany, um, the railway line and the highway that was constructed separated this lake, which is called Pink Lake, from um, a chain of lakes in the system. And uh, periodically, the, the chain of lakes would flush into this one, being the last lake in the system, and they would bring um, high amounts of salt water with them. And over the summer, the sun would evaporate the water and bring the water levels down and bring the salt concentration up and turn it really like a really beautiful pink color. But that's not the case these days. Who knows, maybe in the future, if the salt content gets high enough and the water level gets low enough, um, it'll turn pink again. But I don't see it happening, especially not being connected to that system that it was um, disconnected from. But pretty cool nonetheless. The water is really uh, a really pretty blue color over here. And you can see down here, very faintly, there is a tinge of pinkness to it in the uh, in the shallows. So pretty cool. And uh, that's a good wrap up for the loop road around Esperance. in the town of Esperance for a couple of days and we were just blown away like I don't think I've ever been to a place that I've just loved so much so quickly like I could honestly just spend months there maybe even years so now we've moved into the National Park area and we're going to explore all the beaches in this area uh, there's so many more I just still am just in shock at how many amazing beaches are in the one area so you can see our campsite just there um, and now we're gonna walk and I'll show you La Grand Beach boom look at that I can't believe it hey so nice here I can't wait oh it's <laughs> <laughs> got that face full of sand um, I can't wait to just be parked up here spend a couple days enjoying absolute paradise I love it <laughs> heading out to Hellfire Bay today. It's a scorcher. It's about 35 degrees right now. It is 10 o'clock and apparently Hellfire Bay is a pretty nice spot so we'll go out there hopefully get some shelter from the Norgley and enjoy a nice beach day. Coming for you. What is it about turquoise water and pristine white sand that is so appealing to the eye? I don't, is it the rarity of it? I don't know, but it's there's something just so special. Here, no, and that's what makes me think that's why they say that West is best. 
<laughs> when uh, when we come to Western Australia, you know, you hear this West is best all the time. And as someone who grew up in New South Wales, loved the place, you know, moved to Southeast Queensland, also loved that place. Traveled up the whole east coast of Queensland, all the way up to Cape York, seen so many amazing places. I have, and I wanted to be biased about <laughs> West is best. I wanted to find the chink in the armor, but as soon as we got here, it took me about one day. <laughs> the first beach. <laughs> the first beach. I was like, like this is no joke. And we've only been to Esperance. Like, yeah. We're only in Esperance. And, and if you asked me, like, if you said to me, you've got to go on a holiday, you can only pick one place, I would, without a doubt, without a hesitation, just say Esperance straight away yeah. like and it's the first place we've been to in WA so I think it's the best place I've been to so far <laughs> so far uh, yeah out of everything but yeah we got like I'm so glad we're gonna be spending <laughs> the flies are a drawback you know there's a solid case for West is best but the flies are a drawback <laughs> um, and we're gonna be spending like 12 months here so I can't wait for the rest of this year and we're already talking about like even after this 12 months like how we want to come back and spend a few months here and yeah yeah i'd say we'll be visiting this area a lot of times i would love a lifetime. yeah i'd love a home base somewhere around this area yeah. this southwest and we haven't even got into the, like the massive like forests and plantations and no, stuff we which haven't even seen the Blue coast yet. no no <laughs> but we're off to a good start guys i hope you enjoyed the video so far <laughs> oh my god! No! Got him! Oh my god! Hiddish! <laughs> You're a loser! Sorry for almost killing you. So we just spent the morning down there at Hellfire Bay. There's a little 20 minute walking track over to the next bay, which is Little Hellfire Bay, and that's where we're gonna go ahead now. Isn't that amazing? Just the sounds of all these different species of birds, they're all going nuts. There's a lot of this Banksia um, in flower and all sorts of other sorts, sorts of plants in flower. And um, the amount of bees and birds around here, amazing. And you can hardly see them. The bush is that dense. You can hardly see any of these birds in there. They're not shy though, as you can hear. So pretty. If you watched the last episode, you'll know that we popped a tyre when we were towing our caravan across the Nullarbor, which wasn't much fun, and neither was trying to source a new tyre. So these tyres that we've got on here, these Mickey Thompsons, um, they don't make them anymore, which is a bit of a pain. It's pretty good practice to run the same tyre. Um, so unfortunately, we had to get the next generation of the Mickey Thompson. Um, this is the Baja Boss, and it's basically the next version of this. And uh, because we took the spare tire off and it hadn't been really rotated in, it had a lot of uh, had a lot of tread on it. I thought I'd get a brand new tire and just use this um, half used one as the spare. So yeah, that's the end of the tire saga. Hopefully, hopefully we don't do any more tires soon because this bad boy cost us five hundred and forty dollars. Mm. Almost thinking about getting a brand new tire I like getting new tires all around but when I got the cost of them I almost fell over so <laughs> I thought no nah, we'll do what we we'll uh, do with what we've got for now the Mickeys are doing the job um, but 
yeah, if you guys have any tire brands or tire types that you would recommend, if you've got any suggestions, definitely leave them down in the comments. Just like a bought one. you can see it's a little bit gloomy outside and that means that we didn't climb up Frenchman's Peak this morning. Tomorrow the forecast is looking good. It's looking to be a lot less cloudy in the morning and that's when we really want to do it. I really want to go out there for a sunrise and um, yeah get captured in all its glory. But a good thing about the campground um, that we're at, La Grand Campgrounds, is that you can drive up the beach. It's like a shortcut into Esperance. It's only 22 k's up the beach and it shaves about 10 or 20 k's off your uh, trip into Esperance if you want to go into Esperance. So it's low tide at the moment and uh, yeah, being a gloomy day, we thought we'd get uh, a few little chores done and go and do our shopping and all those sorts of fun things. And so we're yeah, just hitting down the beach into Esperance. It's a pretty cool way to go and do your, do your shopping, I might say. Yeah, I don't think we've gone for a shopping run along water. the beach before. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the sand's like nice and hard, and it's just a nice morning to be out here on the beach. This is the first car that we're passing. Mm. All right, we're back from the shops, and I understand that we've acquired quite a few <laughs> items, and there's been a little bit of redecoration going on. <laughs> so excited it's been on my agenda to like decorate the caravan since we got into it and seven months later i finally started putting some effort into doing it so when we went on our little beach mission into town i stopped by the plant shop and i got this like fake hanging plant everything's fake because one border crossings they take your plants off you and two probably will kill plants <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but we actually had this fusion lock shelf uh in the cupboard here but it was kind of just we weren't really using no, it no, no. so i got brad to move it up here and now i put my beautiful plant and our soap and salt and peppers and our how speaker how good is there. this speaker yeah it looks look cool, at that right? thing that is mint i love how it blends in with the back wall too uh -huh. and then over here i bought this um tray and this cactus fake cactus as well because we used to just have the soda stream and the kettle just sitting there on the bench mm. and now that it's in its nice little tray with its plant it looks a bit more like it's meant to be there i reckon yeah. it's a bit more homey so yeah they're the main things oh, also this thousand watt kettle so that good. is like so good it's like a silicon based pop up and down thousand yeah. watt 240 volt kettle so if you've got like a small inverter it's so good it's only a liter as well so if you only want to boil a couple of cups of water yeah. for a coffee it's just perfect and it was so like what good. was it like 30 dollars from yeah. snowies yeah happy days yeah um oh yeah and we got this new pillow as well 14 dollars <laughs> from kmart also i've loved that there's been a kmart near us it's been a while <laughs> it's the first time that we've seen in like six we, weeks we did have one there but it broke yeah and we hadn't been able to get a new one um, oh, and this little plant, because what I'm going to do is in the bathroom, this is going to be my next project, I'm going to put like another fusion lock thing there, I reckon, and I'm going to put the the plant and maybe a candle or something nice smelling. Yeah, that's so a good idea. So when Brad stinks out the toilet, it can oh, smell Oh, get out. <laughs> if only you guys knew the truth. <gasps> okay. <laughs> but yeah, so now the caravan's feeling a little bit more homey. I think I'm just going to keep pottering away at it in the coming months. Anyways, the weather's um, starting to clear up it looks like, so tomorrow morning I think we're on to climb up the Frenchman's Peak. So hopefully we'll see you on top of the mountain. Or oh, going up the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> see you then. Bye. Oh, I 
actually you can see us all right. I actually didn't think you'd be able to see us. It's quite light already. We've got about 20 minutes or half an hour until the sun rises. We're here at the peak. Absolutely stunning morning. Not a cloud in the sky. It's and nine degrees. It is nine degrees, so it's a bit brisk. But we're making our way up the peak. They reckon it's about a half an hour walk. We're gonna try and cut that down a little bit. But I can't wait to see you guys at the top. This is gonna be a cracker. <laughs> Look at the garden, it's so pretty. Yeah, the jumpers are coming off. Steep. It is steep. We made it to the top in record time, about 20 minutes. We did do a little run along that road, but just as well because as soon as we popped up over the ridge here, um, that sun was, was uh, yeah, she was coming up. So we timed it perfectly, but we've got our coffees this morning. Mm. Cheers. And uh, enjoying the morning. I will put the drone up here in a bit um, when everyone else has enjoyed the peaceful serenity of the sunrise. Because there's a few other people up here and it's so peaceful and quiet. It would just, uh, it wouldn't be the right thing to put the drone up right now, but have a go at those islands. Yeah, I didn't realise that there'd be so many islands in Esperance, but there's heaps of islands, hey. Yeah. And that mountain over there, the, like the cart, the shadow that the mountain cast. So cool. I learned a couple of fun facts about Cape Legrand and these, these rock formations. So these rock formations are made out of granite and around 40 million years ago in the Eocene period, the sea levels were about 300 meters higher than what they are now. Now Frenchman's Peak is about 243 meters tall and that would have been well submerged if the sea levels were over 50 meters higher than that. The only summit here that would have been is taller than this one, this is the second tallest, would be Cape Legrand, which is there behind me. And that would have just poked out over the ocean, like it would have just looked like a little island. Sort of like what these islands look like out here in the ocean. So that would, is why all these rocks have such wacky looking formations and caves and sinkholes. And you know, um, yeah, they've all been carved out through ocean currents and waves millions and millions of years ago. So crazy to think that we're standing somewhere where which was completely submerged in water. But would explain that sweet cave in there. And if I had the stones, I would fly the drone through that. But I just can't afford to lose another one. <laughs> Have a go at Patsy up here. Just hanging out on the rock. Not a bad spot for a morning coffee, is it? No. It's pretty good. What do you think about the Eocene period? Yeah, it's hard to imagine, hey, but then when you just said that, like, all those islands, it just makes me think, like, yeah. imagine all those islands being exposed yeah. as rock mountains. If the day. sea level was 300 metres lower, there'd yeah. be a hell of a lot more mountains around That's here. That's crazy. And it would explain, all, like, all this sand. This is all sand throughout here, so it would explain the deposits of sand because yeah. all those years ago, the um, currents would have brought the sand along. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Makes for a very unique looking landscape. Hmm. 
All right, we're gonna wrap up this episode here. There's still so much more that we need to see in this area, like the two best beaches, Wharton Beach and Lucky Bay. We haven't even got there yet, but we were planning on spending a few weeks in this area. So we'll end this episode here and show all that good stuff in the next episode as we head further east. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, Give us a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment, tell us what you're up to and subscribe if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the legends that keep buying us beers. At this rate, I'm gonna have a belly in no time. <laughs> thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.